Um, hello and welcome to yeah. our show up standout online visibility expert series for entrepreneurs. My name is Juliet Stapleton and uh, today I welcome a friend of mine, dear friend and a lovely woman, Tori Reed, content funnel expert who helps business owners and entrepreneurs craft content that actually inspires their audiences to engage and purchase. Hi Tori, how are you? Hi Juliet, it's been so long, I'm well, how are you? I am it's been a while since we've done one of these. <laughs> yes, I know. We did one before. I think it was before Show Up Stand Out. We did the easy chat together, which was mm -hmm. ages, ages ago. And you know what? Time flies. And it's amazing what happens in such a short time, relatively few months, you know, and we're completely different places, which is um, geographically right. and in life, you know, so <laughs> in any kind of respect. So, yes, guys, um, Tori is a, a content expert and she has her own group that Tori, what's your group name? It's called Content Mastery for Entrepreneurs, Actionable Growth and Income Strategies. Definitely join this, guy, join this group, guys, because there's so much. There's freebies and goodies left, right, and center, and so much content. And I follow the group as well. But uh, before we go, we are not going to talk about the group as much right now um, as the actual content. Uh, and what, what happens to people who come to me, uh, first thing they say, well, I don't know what to post. So the content is one of those big obstacles that holds people back from showing up online. And we're on a mission to make everybody show up authentically and share with the world. And let me just ask you, Tori, maybe before I go into the question, um, how, where to start, maybe start with introducing yourself a little bit better than I did. <laughs> and then maybe tell us where to start when you are uh, starting your online marketing. Yeah, sure thing. I think your introduction to me was like perfect. But um, all right, guys, my name is Tori Reeve. For those of you who don't know me, I started out in um, entrepreneurship and working for myself as a writer, as a freelance blogger, if you will. And I worked my way up to Lifehacker, Huffington Post, Startup Nation, like all these different names that you might know. Um, and then over time, I developed my skills. I became a marketer, like a full fledged marketer. I learned how to do all kinds of stuff in the marketing sphere, such so as running ads and creating funnels. And what I learned for myself and for my clients as I was doing this kind of work was that I could create something called content funnels, um, which is like a sales funnel, but the focus is on the message and on the content and simply put saying the right thing at the right time to the right people. And that that's how you get your conversion rates up with the funnel. And so now that's really my focus is to kind of spread the message of like the benefits of that. Um, it's something I teach about. It's something I coach on. It's something I consult on. And so that is what I do. I help people really refine their message in a way that's going to get them much, much better results than what they've been getting. And so I think that's that sometimes it. people, when they hear the word funnel, it puts them off. Mm -hmm. If they're not, you know, um, a lot of my clients are not very technical. And this is a terminology that, mm -hmm. that people don't know much, you know, and it's an interesting mm -hmm. way. So basically, when we're talking about a funnel, we're just talking about filtering people to the best of those who want to work with us, right? So this is it's kind of very simple content out of everyone, the universe to those people who are ideal for you. And mm -hmm. of course, you need to think about what what this ideal customer will want to hear, right? Yes. Do you have any strategies? How do you how do you uh, how do you find out what they want to hear from you? The main thing that I teach people who are starting out and like who really um, aren't aren't well versed in the craft of like market research because once you become well versed in it, there's like a million, million different ways to like skin a cat. But the best starting point that I've found for most people is to just go into a place where your target audience resides. So like once you figure out who it is that you want to sell to, go into a place where they reside and simply post, this could be a Facebook group, a Reddit thread, a Quora thread, wherever, um, and post this one question, just what's your biggest challenge with blank? And then you fill in that blank with whatever it is that they are looking for help for. And so for instance, if you are a dog trainer, you'll go into a group with a bunch of dog parents, people who have dogs, and you'll, you might say, what's your biggest challenge with potty training your puppy? Or what's your biggest challenge with obedience training, something of that nature, and then step back and give them the open platform to simply answer that question and speak their grievances. And what this does is it allows you to then pick, pick out like the most popular answers, like the top, 
the top one is definitely going to be like your main focus as far as content, but the top three really gives you variety and what, what it is that you can create in return. Literally go create the solutions to the biggest problems that they're talking about in forms of content, bring it back and deliver it to them and they will eat it up. And um, that's the simplest, simplest, simplest method I've found when it comes to people who are beginners. You don't have an eye to like know what to look for yet. That's a really awesome way to hit the ground running because it works excellent. Like all of my students get awesome results from it, but also to start practicing the art of market research. Because the main thing about content isn't that you necessarily want to be like the most eloquent or, or the most entertaining. Like, yes, those things are great. They're perks. But the most important thing about content that's going to get you results is just being relevant, just presenting them relevant solutions to what it is they're looking for. And so that's that's my way to get my people results and it works. <laughs> Brilliant. I'm going to add to it actually, guys. If you are if you are just starting and say you have your own group, don't make a, a mistake of just posting this kind of question in your own group or on your own page, especially not on the page because it, not many people will see that. Go into other places, like, like Tori just mentioned, go mm -hmm. somewhere else and not necessarily in a group that does exactly what you do, but something very complimentary. So what are your ideal clients into? Apart from what you're offering, what are they into? You know, like yeah. let's say my, my ideal clients are all very spiritual people. They will be into uh, self-development. They care a lot about, you know, being authentic, being spiritual. So anything to do with manifesting, being spiritual, these are the groups where I thrive, right? So I can mm -hmm. post a question like that or I can post inspirational posts and I get so much more, um, you know, so, so much more back from these posts. And I'm not talking about self-promotion. I'm just talking about really, truly from the heart, inspirational or just question. You get mm -hmm. much more information. Another, for me, uh, one of the tricks that I've discovered was the groups on your own group, the question, questions that you have when people enter your group. Don't waste them on questions like, are you going to obey the rules? Because you know what? If they don't want to obey the rules, they'll say yes, and they still do something that's not allowed. Anyway, <laughs> it's not, that's nothing. You know, it's not like, but that's where you can ask those questions as well. And people mm -hmm. give you so much. So if you have something like if you have a handy plugin like group funnels, for example, that we both use, right, you can store this information in your Google sheet and then at a glance, you can, when you're saying, well, what shall I, what shall I talk about in the next week? You can at a glance see what topics you can, you can choose from. It's an amazing way of doing market research when you don't That's know what you're exactly what I do. I have group funnels for my group. And as people come into my group, I have like two or three questions that I ask. I switch it up every week or so. Um, what's your biggest challenge is always one of the questions, but then I'll switch up the other two about fears and goals and, and what are you trying? What methods are you using, et cetera? And then I have a Google sheet that's like literally full of answers for me to go and just like pull from when it comes to creating content. It's amazing. It's fascinating, you know, and it's something that so many, I, I've just joined today two groups. They had uh, five figures. They've had 26,000 members, something like 12,000 members, and they completely don't use their questions to do yeah. market research. And I just say, well, guys, <laughs> let me help you. Anyway, let's move on. <laughs> let's move on. And um, what are the biggest uh, mistakes do you think people are making when they're starting their uh, online marketing? I think probably like, okay, the first mistake that I see everyone make is that they come into online marketing and they instantly get, um, they're like looking around, looking for answers and they instantly get like retargeted with this and that. And so I get it. It's not their fault, but what people do is they get shiny object syndrome and they're like, Oh, well, this person over here is selling me on email. And this person over here is saying, I need to use chatbots. And this person is saying, I need to use YouTube. And this person is saying, I need to use that. And what they end up doing is they end up focusing so much on the mechanism instead of realizing that if you're saying the wrong, wrong thing in one place, you're just going to say the wrong thing in all of these other places. You got to figure out how to say the right thing first, and then you can say the right thing wherever you want to say it, and you're going to win everywhere. And so that's one of the biggest things that I try to like redirect and steer people from doing wrong. Um, and so if you guys find yourself like, think about it, like if you find yourself joining a bunch of webinars or having, getting a bunch of trainings on different mechanisms and different tools and different platforms, but you don't have like the right message yet, then take a step back, focus on your message. Figure out your message first. 
That's right. That's right. You know, and uh, but but that's right. But I have one little objection. Let's see how you handle it. Okay. Somebody said to me uh, months back. You know, I was doing this, and I had a little bit of a moment of confusion. Somebody said, "Ah, oh, you're not attracting the right people. You need to figure out your message and change your message." And you know what it did to me? It confused me even more. So much oh, so that. that so much so that as a visibility strategist, I started hiding and not being visible because I was just too confused. I was saying, oh my God, what am I, what am I supposed to talk about? Do you have any tips or any ideas how, uh, when somebody says, figure out your message, like what, where do you go to start with? How do you figure out that message? The start is finding what's relevant. So it's what we just talked about before right, so in the last one. Right, okay, okay, I get it. Yeah, so so basically what you're saying, just so if somebody got confused the same way, where you start with, you can you can um, search. Actually, there is another great, um, great tip that I can give as well here. If you mm -hmm. don't know completely what to start with, go and research your competitors and look at their sales pages and the videos uh -huh. and what they have in their sales pages, because that will give you a first sort of set of pains, frustrations, topics that people might be uh, struggling with. Just literally watch those videos with pen and paper, paper and write down all the keywords and, and use them back. So I, I have done that very successfully as well at the start. So, mm -hmm. yes, I hope that that would be that would be OK. Um, what is a guaranteed win? We were talking before this and uh, before this interview and Tori mentioned this guaranteed win thing that I wanted to, to, to find out a little bit more about it. That was it. The ask and deliver. So that the reason that the guaranteed one is the ask and deliver is because um, and why I call it that is because when I was writing for Lifehacker, I actually struggled a little bit. And the reason that I struggled, I wasn't getting enough traffic. So I was a blogger and I wasn't getting enough traffic to stay on staff. Bloggers had to write compelling enough content to bring in enough traffic to stay on, stay on staff. And this was a few years ago and I wasn't bringing in enough traffic and I was trying my best. Like, first off, we were overworked. We had to write 14 posts per week. Um, and so the quality of my writing fell. I wasn't nearly as, like, if you look at my writing today, it's very, um, it's very engaging content that I put out today. Emotionally compelling. Um, it can be funny, it can be quirky, like I'm a good writer, but because because I had to put out so much content, I wasn't able to focus on those things. And so that's why I thought I wasn't getting enough traffic. And I'm, and I'm like, man, I got to figure out how to make my content really, really good, even though I have like all of this stuff like stacked up against me in terms of like they're overworking, they work us to death. Um, and then when I realized one of my editors, one of the fellow editors came over to me and he was just like, Tori, why don't you focus on r figuring out what our readers want to read about and write that? And so I realized I was making like a really big mistake. I wasn't even like, and that's what most pe people do. They focus on being a really compelling, engaging. They focus on wordplay or how can I sound quirky or how can I sound cool? Like all of these people I'm competing with, um, instead of just focus on focusing on being as relevant as you can possibly be. And so when I made that switch, when I took that advice and made that switch, my stats skyrocketed. I went from posts that were getting about 28,000 hits, which is bombing for Lifehacker. Lifehacker gets 60 million hits per month right now um, to posts that get almost a million hits or above half a million hits, which is excellent. Those are great posts. And so that's what I went from. And that's what I went to just making that one little tweak. And I wasn't writing content that was funnier or more engaging in other ways. I just focused on relevancy. So that's why I call it the guaranteed win, because a lot of people, what really holds a lot of people back, I think, is that they're like, uh, like, I feel like I'm not a good writer. I feel like I'm not, I'm not funny enough or I'm not engaging enough and stuff like that. And those things are second, secondary important. The most important thing is your relevancy. And if you can figure out how to be as like more relevant than your competitors, if you can do that market research to figure out how to be as relevant as possible and like hit the nail on the head with what exactly are their pain points are, uh, what exactly are their pain points? What exactly are their goals and help them get that? Um, then you're going to win. And so that's why I call it the guaranteed win. But yes, it's just the ask and deliver. And you guys can also ask about what methods are they using to overcome this challenge that you asked them about. You can continue that conversation, ask them about their fears, ask them about um, their goals. And what you can do is you can end up shaping your content around all of those things, like all of those four points. And that's just going to make you even more relevant. And it's going to make your content even more compelling just from a relevant standpoint. 
this is a great this is a great way there's a strategy and uh, that I just realized that I use but it's actually a strategy so if you post something like that somewhere in the group that you are you know you're active and people maybe start connecting to you through the group because you're active you're contributing and you're asking mm -hmm. questions uh, when you get these answers you will see that there's a pattern there's always to every answer there's always a pattern isn't it there's as you yeah. said there's top one thing top three things people will repeat things so you will see the pattern what what you need to write about so what I do is I actually go to my own personal profile and I post something really from the heart really inspirational talking just about this particular thing and it could be as little as somebody said to me um, somebody said to me I really admire you because you're not English speaking and you see so you going in and killing it and you don't think about you know mistakes or anything you know and no I don't I don't really care but, <laughs> but that was a great way for me to actually use that to create a lot of content because there's so many people out there who are you know they're not native speakers whether it's English well internationally it's English now and and they feel very they, it holds them back that they they think that because they have an accent or because they they don't know you know they, they can't maybe speak off the top of their head with perfect grammar guys listen to this video back I don't speak with perfect grammar at my best I know it but I speak too fast to think about it so and I and I used that and so powerfully that it was the right message to these people and I, I was able to convert those people into members to my group and some of them are working with me now because this is something it's just being be no don't wait too long when you see this this is a hot topic you know you've discussed your hot topic let's say in that group post it on your on your personal wall as well so you get engagement there as well and chances are if you connect it with these people who who answered questions and I always connect with people who get active on my posts elsewhere um, mm -hmm. they will see it again and that reinforces the message that reinforces that you perhaps are someone for them that's if you are yeah. we're talking about like it's, it's not really like if you're doing blogging it's more about just being active and posting content on social media and yeah 100 percent. no that's an excellent strategy so you can go and you can post um the question and have that conversation in a different group and then post the answer on your own page and then just connect with them and then they'll see it that's excellent no that's a great idea so mm -hmm. yeah, there you go, there you go. I just I, I just realized that this is a strategy and we should just package it like this. <laughs> but it definitely <laughs> works. And then that brings me, brings me to uh, the last question I have, but that's probably the most important. So you start getting um, more active on social media, you start blogging, you start, you know, just in general online. Um, mm -hmm. After a while, you have a collection of content that you have. How mm -hmm. is there a way to um, how do you move forward? So do you just like randomly post when you're inspired or even if you're planning or um, is there some sort of way to assess what posts are better for you and what are not good for you? Yeah, absolutely. And so first off, one thing that you want to do or one thing that you want to avoid is feeling like you'll never be consistent enough. I get a lot of people in my circle. I don't know about yours who come in and they're like, one of my biggest struggles is that I feel like I'll just never be consistent enough. I see all of these prolific posters who are posting all the time. They're all over the place. Um, those are the gurus and the gurus have monstrous teams. You can still win without one and you can still win while being human and not being inspired to post every single day of your life. Uh, what you want to do, I call this like the 80, 20 is once you get some content under your belt, you can go back. And you can find the 20% of the content that really resonated the most. And so your post that you were just talking about, for instance, that might be a part of the 20% that gets you the most clients, the most engagements, the most sales from your audience. And so you can repurpose that. You can turn around, you can add it to an email sequence. You can figure out how to say that message a million different ways. And that way you're not constantly searching for new topics. You could just kind of point people back to it here and there. Um, or you could bump it up in the news feeds by adding a comment to it, right? That's an easy way to do it too. And so you can have the content that's already working for you and generating income for your business work for you over and over and over again. So one of my goals is to figure out like, how do I give this one piece of content a million lives rather than writing a million fresh pieces of content? Saves you a ton of time, saves you a lot of stress. And then you get to feel more comfortable about the content that's actually like generating income for your business. It's natural to want to create. You just shouldn't feel like you have to create when you can't or when you're not inspired to. That way you get to create when you're inspired to and the content that you create when you like have that inspiration, it's going to be more impactful. It's going to be higher quality content because you wanted to make it. And so use the 80, 20 when it comes to stuff like that. And you just want to go back and figure out what posts you're getting the highest engagement. Um, what posts you can go back and ask your clients like, Hey, just wondering like, what's your, what's your favorite post 
of mine that I used to, that I've put out. I know that you like followed me for a second before hiring me. What's your favorite post that you saw? And see if there are any trends of the posts that are the highest performing and use those messages over again. Figure out how to recycle and repurpose those messages for the new people that are coming in. Because if you're growing, you're always going to have new people coming in who haven't seen those yet. And so those are your future clients. You can just recycle them and use them again. I have uh, another tip to add to this that I just came up. I'm so good today. I just come up <laughs> on the fly. Right. See, when you write something, let's say you post it, uh, a post and you got great engagement and then you, your, your personal messenger, you get all these people, you know, they want either advice or they want to book a call with you or, or whatever way. Believe me, that happens at some stage when you are consistent. That definitely happens. So mm -hmm. what I do is if I see that the post that I posted gets this great reaction, I save it. You know, there is an option to save uh, on Facebook, but there's also mm -hmm. an option to save it into a collection. So you yes. can create different collections. So I have collections, you know, high converting per posts because I can see that these posts not just saying, yes, I can resonate with it, but it's sort of, yes, this woman gets me. I want to work with her kind of posts. So I have different yeah. collections for different type of posts and that works a treat. And as Tori just said, repurpose. I sometimes, I, I write long posts. I don't write short posts. And mm -hmm. so I write long posts. And when I see that there's a really, really good engagement, those are the posts that go into my blog. I also submit them everywhere I can medium strive global i contribute to two magazines that i also su submit them and you know they just create this these million lives they could be much wider than you can even imagine you know uh, spectrum do a video doing saying exactly the same thing or maybe break it into a few parts and that's so much you can do with just one post that you posted when you're inspired to me personally planning ahead definitely works because there's days when you're inspired and there are days when you're not inspired but if you have a plan you'll go and stick the plan you say okay what do i have to talk to about today all right fine i'll do that and that takes that overwhelm of of wondering you know because Look, I don't have a big team and yet I manage to be consistent on social media because I have a plan and then I, I sometimes I'm inspired and sometimes I just follow the plan. Showing up is the most important thing, isn't it? Mm -hmm. So, Tori, tell me, you were men you mentioned that you released a new webinar yesterday. Yes. Um, so the new webinar is called Content Domination and it's how to finally master the content game without feeling like uh, you fear failure without feeling like you might fail, without feeling like you don't know what to write about or what to say, and without, of course, feeling like you'll just never be consistent enough. So some of the things that we went over today are in there, and then there's also like a wealth of other stuff in there as well. And so I will drop the link for you guys here in a second. As soon as we hop off here, I'll drop the link for anybody who wants to check it out. Perfect. And for those who are watching us somewhere that they don't see the link, can you tell us, <laughs> can you say what it is? uh say what the link is yeah. i don't even know i just made this link yesterday hold on oh, one second okay. well, no, we, i think it's important because i noticed that there's we are doing this on facebook guys if you're watching this on youtube or somewhere else somebody shared it um these links sometimes get <laughs> disappearing so i want to get make sure that uh we have that so um, anyway if you have any questions to um tori i'm going to also add a link to her group Definitely join join for group. It's it's brilliant, um, brilliant amount of support you need, especially if you're posting something. You know, um, I mean, if you're if you're concentrated on your content. My my advice when it comes to content that make your plan and post from the heart, and don't worry about how you sound. That's the yeah. most important thing. Don't worry about it because you know it's like if you start worrying about what you're supposed to be doing, you will always suffer from imposter syndrome, and you will always feel like you're not doing a good job. You just have to to just do it, and you will see how it affects people, and you will see that you're doing the right thing. Over time, you will definitely get that validation. Yes, so, I agree with that wholeheartedly. There we go. I just dropped the link down there. And the link is bit.ly slash content domination TR, my initials. Fantastic. Tori, thank you so much for joining me today. I had a pleasure talking to you. And I think that our viewers got loads of good um, information and good strategies from here. Thank <laughs> between you for having me. And I hope, I hope they did. <laughs> yes, between your expertise and me just being, you know, awesome on the fly today, something's happening. Some days you're just like that. <laughs> yeah, no, you came with some really awesome strategies. No, thank you so much for having me, Juliet. It's always fun to hang out with you. I appreciate it. And thank you guys.
thanks everybody and it's a pleasure as always i will see you tomorrow with another episode of show up stand out and another awesome guest so keep an eye out on eastern uh, time it's noon and uk time 5 p.m and guys i hope you all have a great day bye bye sorry